Hey everybody, Eric Hayden here in the garden today. First liquid feeding of the year, so I wanted to do a video on that. I'll try to link to an old video in the description where I'm more detailed about what I do. A couple points, um, this liquid feeding roughly every two weeks is what I aim for. It's something similar to miracle Grow and uh, Fish Emulsion. I'll get into that in a second. I had some comments on the prior video I did on fertilization talking about different growing cycles of roses. You don't want to do every two weeks through the whole summer. It's kind of an ebb and flow on your roses. And what I mean by that is four to six weeks uh, prior to your blooms uh, is usually your bloom cycle. About five to seven weeks, um, the rose cycles and you'll have new blooms. Those are the periods I try to do some liquid fertilization. It's not something you have to do. I kind of call this the dessert for the roses. Uh, what I mean by that is I've already put down a slow release organic fertilizer. I've already put down cottonseed meal. I'll do some alfalfa. The roses are good. But with this uh, twice a month liquid feeding, that's kind of giving them a little bit of an extra boost. And again, I'm growing roses for the purpose of showing them at rose shows. So I want them to be as good as possible. So when you see this video, don't think this is something you have to do. This is just that little extra uh, in the garden that can, can kind of make everything look really good. And what you want to do is, again, after pruning, after the leaves, uh, kind of become more substantial in the spring, that's when you can start your liquid program up until that first bloom. You deadhead, you wait another week or so, and then when the roses are ready to uh, start that second March to the next bloom cycle, that's where you start your liquid program again. So again, it's supplemental, it's not the main course. Um, one thing I wanna mention is how I do it. For years and years and years, I've contemplated doing it easier. Uh, getting something like this, um, Many, many brands are out there where you can put in a concentrate. It takes um, on the top, you can say, you know, one tablespoon per gallon, which is the rate from a lot of things, and it sprays it uh, through the whole garden. I hemmed and hauled. There's a siphon system. There's all kinds of stuff out there, but it's very dependent on your pressure, and I'm real far from the, um, where the pump is, so I was worried my pressure wasn't good enough, and as a scientist, I just couldn't get my head around uh, an exact rate. I want to know exactly what I'm putting in the garden. I finally purchased this. I read the instructions and I put it back in the box. <laughs> I'm sure people use it. Comment below if you've used, you know, I know um, uh, Ortho makes a hose end sprayer, lots of hose end sprayers out there. This particular one, um, the instructions for the dilution of wettable powders was to be desired. And since I was confused, I went back to the way I always do it, which is these four gallon buckets. You'll see them all interspersed through the garden. Is this the easiest way? No. Is it a more backbreaking way? Yes. Is it a very, very precise way? Yes, and that's why I do it. It's precise because each gallon or each of these buckets is four gallons specifically. You can get these for free at a lot of grocery stores um, in the bakery section if you just ask them and clean them out. That's how frosting and a lot of material comes in. And so I get those um, in four gallon containers and I use a quarter cup for my measurement. So I know that I'm getting one tablespoon per gallon exactly, it's precise. Those devices are fine and they certainly are easier, um, but the precision, I'm not sure, so I'm gonna return that to the store. What do I use? Um, generic miracle Grow. In this case, uh, it's by this company, it's 202020. My soil's testing high for phosphorus, so once I'm done this, I've already purchased the same thing in a ratio of 13 to 13. Um, because I test low in uh, potassium, uh, but I'm high in phosphorus. So once I get rid of this, uh, I will not be using the 20 for the middle number. Uh, I highly recommend you hook up with a local farm supply. If I were to buy this at the big box store and those four pound, pound containers, I would be losing a lot of money. This was very cheap. I think a 25 pound bag uh, was the equivalent of what one of those four pound canisters are at the big box store. So look around, they're gonna be a hole in the wall. Sometimes you can find them on Amazon. The problem is sometimes the shipping gets you. 
uh, in terms of they don't, you know, it's not heavier material. It's, it's not as cost effective to ship it uh, through the mail. The other thing I use is just fish emulsion. Um, this is one of the cheaper ones, 511. Again, I think I got this on Walmart.com. They had a sale 14 to $16, I think, a gallon. Pretty cheap. Um, Google this, Amazon it, eBay it. However you can get it for the cheapest is what I recommend. This is a, a known um, quant, you know, brand. So a uh, quarter cup of the 2020-20, quarter cup of the fish emulsion. I put it in the bucket and I fill it up with water and I put it in the garden. So this is very similar to the watering can method. If you have a watering can and you have some potted plants, you put you know, a couple of tablespoons of miracle Grow in, fill it with water and you water it. Uh, this is just expanded because I have 10 of these four gallon containers. Uh, that's 40 gallons. And then I have one five gallon container. You might ask, why did I come up with that amount? I have 44 roses. So roughly one gallon per bush is what I do because this method is backbreaking. For some of these bigger roses, I probably should be doing two gallons. Um, but what I'll do is I'll take, you know, once I fill this up with water, you can see I've got my fish emulsion in there on the right. On the left is the 20-20-20. Fill that up, stir it, and I'll apply one of those buckets to about four roses. That's my one gallon per bush and the rate of a tablespoon per gallon. Again, is it the easiest way? No. Is it the most precise way? Yes. So I'm going to get at it, get some fertilizer on these roses. Comment below if you liquid feed your roses, fish emulsion, um, some type of granular, wettable powder, how do you do it? I'm thinking of changing the system up by getting some trash cans, so kind of expanding you know, the amount of liquid I can hold three 30 gallon trash cans or 32 get a sump pump and do it that way i've seen that method uh, because i want the precision another thing i could do but i didn't elect to do i could get a siphon by my pump and i could um, liquid feed them through the hose through the drip emitters my concern with that these drip emitters are really small and i'm worried they're going to get clogged up with the um, fertilizer especially if i don't mix it really really well so let me know how you do it. Um, if you liquid feed your roses, uh, what method do you use? Um, I'll show you the end of this video, how, how I do this method. Again, pretty self-explanatory at this point. Um, but I'm thinking about trying the trash can and the sump pump where I should be able to stack the trash cans uh, so they won't take up a lot of space. And then I just have to run an extension cord from the house. I do have a wireless clicker to turn the pump on and off from when I used to have rain barrels uh, up in New York. I had four rain barrels plumbed together and I had a pump underneath them and I would turn it on and off with a wireless clicker that you would use for Christmas lights. I just hooked it up in line with the extension cord and then it would turn on and off and I could be in the garden watering and then turning the pump on and off without having to plug and unplug it. So that's it. I'll show you me stirring and applying the fertilizer well, that's it for this video. Comment below, and I'm really curious what you all might be doing in the garden for your liquid program. All right, just starting to apply some of the liquid fertilizer. Again, the fish emulsion and the 20-20-20. Um, each four gallon bucket, I usually pick four roses and try to apply it evenly. Um, I try to get a little bit on the leaves. I'm not overly concerned with that. Uh, if I'm doing that, I do it in the morning, not in the evening. You don't want wet leaves going into the evening. Um, but the absorption of this is much more efficient through the roots than the foliar application. I'm not saying foliar has no place 
in your feeding program, but it's better through the roots. So I'm not that concerned with it. One last thing as I finish off the garden, I already emptied this liquid four gallons on four of my roses. Why four gallon container? Well, number one, these were free. As I mentioned in the beginning, you can get these at a lot of stores. Um, so free is better than something that cost. And then these five gallon containers you can get at the big box store. Nothing wrong with them. They aren't free. But the other thing is I'm a pretty able body 40 something. And just the difference between a five gallon container and a four gallon container is substantial when you're carrying them through the garden. So you may even want a smaller container or you may not even want to fill it up all the way. But that's why I prefer the four gallons. And I kind of stumbled into this since they're square. Um, they're just kind of easy to hold with the handle and then you can pick a corner and they're just real easy in a square shape to kind of lift from the bottom corner and support it with your other hand versus a five gallon cylindrical one. So I've got uh, 40 something more roses to do. Uh, so I'm gonna get at it. Comment below, how do you feed your roses in the liquid form? I really wanna hear from you um, because we're learning as a community. I know that there's no one best way to do it. It's best for what works for you. So I'm curious to hear those different ways. Take care, everyone.